Hello! Welcome to the Davis Museum's Virtual Family Day. My name is Carrie Cushman, and I'm the Linda Wyatt Gruber Class of 1966 Curatorial Fellow in Photography at the Davis. And this is my assistant, Fraulein the Schnauzer. Normally, Fraulein is not allowed to go inside the museum, so she's very happy that today we get to talk about art from our home, as I'm sure you are too. Today, I'm going to share with you what it's like to be a curator. So what is a curator anyway? In the original Latin, the word for curator meant to take care of, and this is still at the heart of what we strive to do. We take care of all of the works of art that live in our museums and come up with different ways to share those works of art with you. One of the main ways that we do this is by creating exhibitions. Exhibitions use objects to tell stories in engaging and interactive ways. These stories can be about many things. For example, you can use art to tell the story of one artist's life, of different cultures from around the world, or about a specific historical event. Many curators have a special area in the history of art that they focus on. For example, I am the photography curator at the Davis Museum, so I am responsible for caring for all of the photography in our collection. I'll show you what I mean by sharing an example of an exhibition about photography that I recently curated. Here we are in the Davis Museum, and we'll make our way over to this gallery where I curated an exhibition called Making Not Taking Portrait Photography in the 19th Century. Before people took photographs of each other with their phones and their cameras, they visited portrait studios where they would pose with props in front of painted backdrops. This big wooden camera was used to make the photographs. In the 1800s, people's photographs could be printed on lots of different kinds of materials, like glass and metal plates, or on tin or paper. And all of these things are included in the exhibition. These portraits became precious family keepsakes, so they were stored in cases or albums, like the ones you see here, to keep them safe. These kinds of photographs were very special to their owners. They were passed down from generation to generation and used to tell stories about a family's history and their ancestors. Ask your grown-ups if you have any old photographs like this in your home. You might be surprised at what's hiding in your attic. In fact, I bet there are lots of things that you can use to curate your own exhibition right from home. Start by choosing an object that is special to you. Think about why it is meaningful to you and your family. What is a story that you can tell about it? For example, since I'm a curator of photography, I am especially attached to this little locket, which has photographs of my grandfather and grandmother inside of it. I'm going to use it as the centerpiece of a mini exhibition that I'll create to tell a story about my grandmother, whose name was Florence. Florence means to blossom or to flower, so I think that I should include some kind of plant in this exhibition. And in fact, this plant used to belong to my grandmother, so it will fit perfectly. I'm also going to include the box that the locket is stored in when I'm not wearing it. This is no ordinary box. Written on the back are the names of all of the people in my family who have owned the locket since it was passed down from generation to generation. It's a wonderful example of how one tiny object can contain so much history. All of the handwriting on the box makes me think of another item, a poem that my grandfather wrote for my grandmother in the year 1940. And I'll include this too. And last, we usually think of museums as places where we go to look at works of art. But when I curate exhibitions, I try to think of ways to engage all five senses. So I'm going to include a recording of one of my grandmother's favorite songs, I Left My Heart in San Francisco by Tony Bennett. 
What story will you tell for your mini exhibition? What items will you include? Have your grown-ups help you find an area in your home where you can put your exhibition on display. And then arrange the objects so that you have a nice balance of color, texture, and content. You'll also need to give your exhibition a name. I'm calling mine Florence. And there you have it. You've created your own exhibition. I hope you've enjoyed exploring what it's like to be a curator with me and Fraulein today. Happy Family Day, and we look forward to seeing you back at the Davis soon.